Hello, and welcome to another edition of Homebrew MTG Pre-Brews, Day 2. Loads of amazing cards to be looking at today, so let's get straight to it. First up, we have Godzilla, King of the Monsters. This is a card that I missed from yesterday, and it's the buyer box promo, if you're lucky enough to get your hands on one. It's a three colorless Mountain Forest 7-3 Legendary Dinosaur Trampling Creature, which says, lethal damage dealt to creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness. Any gruel uh, big smashy deck will be enjoying <laughs> enjoying this card, whether it's in limited or in commander. It essentially says uh, it's a seven seven because its power is now, for all intents and purposes, its toughness. Next up, we have Garuda Doom of Depths. This was another card that I unfortunately missed, um, but now's a chance to look at it. Four colorless. 2 Demir hybrid mana for a 6-6 six, six Demon Kraken that reads When Garuda enters the battlefield, each player puts the top 4 cards of their library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those creatures onto the battlefield under your control. It also is one of the new companion creatures. It's quite a restrictive deck to condition to include it as your commander, but Usually, a set will include, uh, especially in Demir colours, a mill creature, and this definitely does that. A little bit of self mill. Um, luck of the draw when potentially getting creatures off the top of their deck, but even as a 6 6 big beater, it still does the damage. Good stuff. What have we got next? Well, it's the artwork, of course, of this particular card, the Godzilla alternative artwork, Gigan Cyberclaw. We'll be seeing a lot of these today, and again, beautiful artwork. No dinosaur set will be worth its salt without a colossal Dreadmore. It's got another reprint. Since its inception in the Ixland block, it's become a bit of a meme, printed to death, but you won't be disappointed if you see this in your limited pool. A four colorless forest forest 6-6 six, six, trample dinosaur. Get those attacks in. Next card we have is Shredded Sails. Costs one colorless mana and a mountain. For an instant, choose one, destroy target artifact, or deals four damage to target creature with flying, or it has cycling. Really versatile card with different modules that give the best opportunities for different play patterns. I really like King, the different choices that Wizards are providing with these cards, whether it's late game, whether it's spot removal, or whether you're getting rid of those pesky flyers. Next card, we have a Dreamtail Heron. First of a couple mutate creatures, and I'll put the other one by the side. Uh, at common, solid, if uninspiring, but each card, if you stack them, they will get extra, extra value each time you do it. So Dreamtail Heron is a four colorless island, elemental bird, three, four, that flies whenever this creature draws a card, and Cavern Whisperer, four colorless and a swamp for a four, four nightmare creature with menace, whenever this creature mutates each opponent discards card. So the inverse card advantage for each of these cards, they will help you hopefully get one up on your opponent. Next up, we have a Savai Sabertooth, one colorless and a plains for a three ones cat creature. It, it's a vanilla creature, but it would trades up and would fill in the 22nd or 23rd card slot in a limited deck. Leonin of the Lost uh, Pride is fine in standard. It's just that card without the exile clause. Giant Moth Cocoon. This is a one colorless egg creature that reads, when this creature mutates, put a 1-1 counter on it. 
a zero two base stats, but if you stack this up with lower costed mutating creatures, it could be an actual really decent uh, building block for making your creatures bigger. I'm a fan, it's a little bit unassuming, could be a sleeper in this set. Next up, we have another translation for a card called Keep Safe. One colorless and an island for an instant spell that says counter target spell uh, that targets a permanent you control, draw a card. I was talking about Essence Scatter in the last edition. This card, you're more than likely just going to have this stuck in your hand because the likelihood of a permanent you control being targeted is, is not that high. But if you have the face, faith, it does reward you by drawing a card. Next card, we have a Windfold Terron. Five colorless and an island for a 3-6 dinosaur creature. Wingfold Terran enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or a hex proof counter on it. Lovely stuff. I would prefer it to be both, but that's in an ideal world. Quite expensive for what it does. Next card we have is a Fertilid. Now this is a reprinted card originally found in Morning Tide with my new and preferred artwork. Useful fixer, especially in this tri-coloured set. Uh, Two-time ramp that can also double up as an instant speed blocker. So keep your eyes on this one if you are venturing out in the limited environment when <laughs> trying to play three or even four or even five colours. Wilt is a one colourless and a forest instant spell which says destroy target artifact or enchantment cycling for two. This is a strictly better naturalize, a solid limited enchantment or artifact removal piece, usually a sideboard card, but in the limited environment, it could make the one of slot just because of that cycling clause. If you're playing the first of a best of three match, you might have this dead in your hand otherwise, but the cycling can replace it and hopefully delve for a little bit of extra oomph. Next card is Blood Curdle. Now this is premium unconditional removal in limited. It'll be playable even without the menace counter, but with it included, it makes it even more menacing. Our next card is a Phase Dolphin, two colorless and an Island for a 1-4 Elemental Whale. Whenever Phase Dolphin attacks, another target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. Uh, okay, stacks. It can push through or make another creature push through for some final pieces of damage in a stomach, but definitely not for first pick by any standards. The next set of cards, really big fan of. They are a new cycle of wedge themed mana rocks great for fixing for this set and commander decks alike but again that cycling clause is what makes it stand out from other similar mana rocks like the banners or clue stones late game if you don't need any more mana you can just cycle this away trying to find a more impactful card later down the line. I will be looking out for these if I'm splashing and even in themselves they are a decent card to facilitate the different colours in this set. Last one. <laughs> Team of colours. Next card is a Primal Empathy. One colourless, a forest and an island for an enchantment. This card rewards you for having big creatures, and if they aren't big enough, then they give you the counters to make it bigger. Solid utility card. Would be nice for maybe one mana less, but I'd be interested to see how this pans out in, in Limited, and maybe a cheeky Perrin 2 fee or a 1-1 one -one counters deck, like all the Simic commanders seem to have right now. 
general enforcer is one planes and one swamp for two three human soldier legendary humans you control have indestructible this is a pretty decent card actually in a taser karlov build or or a legendary human builds there are a couple that you'll see later on in the video gives indestructible for an added bonus and late game a mana sink for two colorless a plains and a swamp exile target card from a graveyard if this was a creature card create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token so options if you need it so our next card is a glowstone recluse usually a new set tends to have a useful reaching spider uh, in Fearos Beyond Death, it was a chain web acrona. This one, it keeps boosting your creatures if you mutate them, getting bigger and bigger. And I have to say, the artwork, delicious. <laughs> After that little spider, we have an auspicious Starrets, four colorless and a forest for a 6 6 elk beast with mutate. Five colorless and the forest for its mutate ability. When this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. This could get out of hand after two or three times. It's a higher mutate cost, but pair that with cheaper mutate creatures you could be getting a lot of value off the top of your deck before you know it so if you are leaning towards that deck this is a very high pick indeed another mutate creature follows the archipelago gore five colorless two islands for a seven seven leviathan which also has mutate Whenever this creature mutates, tap up to X target creatures, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. So, repeatable sleep effect on this card. A few, <laughs> a few iterations of that. Your opponent will be struggling to stay in the game. A little bit expensive for Commander, but a bomb in Limited for sure. Seems to be a lot of bombs in Uncommon. Hopefully that won't warp the environment too much, but I can guarantee there will be a lot of big creatures coming your way. Okay, I've showcased two similar mutate cards for this pre-brew because they pretty much do the same thing. Hate on your opponent and they can get you out of tricky spots or they can win more. So Chittering Harvester is a five colorless and a swamp four six nightmare creature. Whenever this creature mutates, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So obviously not something you would want to be doing. This coming your way, stack it with this insatiable Hemophage, three colorless, and a swamp for a 3-3 nightmare death touch creature. Whenever this creature mutates, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Ouch, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Next up, we have a trumpeting Gnar. Going ham with this uh, solid mutate creature series today, win more or it could get you out of a tricky spot with extra board presence. So to cast this Trumpeting Gnar, you would have to pay one colorless, a forest and an island for a 3-3 three, three creature beast that has mutate. Whenever this creature mutate, create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Now on to a counter spell that I can get on board with, a strictly better cancel, which costs one colorless mana and two islands for an instant counter target spell usually they are conditional this one is unconditional countering but the cycling clause makes it so versatile if this is stuck in your hand at instant speed you can replace itself 
by drawing a new card. Usually you wouldn't consider a counter spell in a limited deck unless it was really impressive and this one does exactly that. Next card is a Boon of the Wish Giver. Four colourless and two islands for a sorcery that lets you draw four cards and for a reduced cycling cost, discard this card, draw a card. Essentially a divination times two, which is eh, okay, but the real draw for this one is, again, that cycling. Wizards know what they're doing with this ability. It gives you so many options and just makes normally unconsiderable cards something you have to consider. Okay, so speaking about options, Skull Prophet for a swamp and a forest for a 3-1 human druid. You can tap this to add either a swamp or a forest, which is Golgari colors, but you can also tap it to put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. So whether you are going to self mill, whether you are going to use it as a mana dark, or whether you're going to use it as a two drop beta, one of, low key, one of the best cards of the day for me. Valiant Rescuer is one of the cards that you will see both in the commander products, commander decks, and the normal Akoria sets. I'll be speaking about the different commander decks in different videos because they are all going to be released over the weekend. I'm sure some spicy cards will be coming out of those products. Our next card is called Dire Tactics. Now, to play this card, you have to pay a Plains and a Swamp for an instant card that allows you to exile target creature. If you don't control a human, you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. Wow, this is amazing removal if you have a human. Otherwise, it's a self-drain swords to plowshares for an extra swamp. Also great at instant speed that cannot be underestimated. <laughs> Next card is a cute little flourishing fox for one planes, a one one, which allows you to cycle for a reduced cost and whenever you cycle another card, puts a 1-1 counter on Flourishing Fox. Um, not too bad. It gets bigger over time or late game. If you do need to search for something bigger, cycle it away. Hopefully, get something a little bit more impactful. Okay. Channeled Force. Two colorless for an island and a mountain. As an additional cost to the cast a spell, discard X cards. Target player draws X cards. Channeled Force deals X cards to up to one target creature or planeswalker. Now, this effect is called rummaging, where you discard first and then draw afterwards. And it's a pretty good rummage effect where you deal damage on top of it. So if you're mana flooded or need to sneak in for that extra bit of damage, then this is a potentially pretty decent card. Next up, we have Reconnaissance Mission for two colorless and an island. For an enchantment, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Now, look at the card Coastal Piracy. In 8-foot edition, it was a rare and it was a bomb. This card costs one less and now has the cycling clause. Maybe an example of power creep, but this is a great card if you can get through that damage. Any creatures with evasion or cheeky combat tricks such as ninjutsu, I'm looking at you Yuriko, they will definitely find a home in those sorts of decks. Next up, we have a translated card which is Tiger's Will, one colorless and a planes for an instant that allows a target creature to gain plus two plus two. If it's blocking, instead put two plus one plus one counters on it with cycling two. 
I'm looking at you Feather this time. This is potentially a really decent combat trick, which I'm sure we'll see lots of play in a limited environment as well. Well, Proud Will Bonder, two colorless and then two gruel hybrid mana for a 4-3 human warrior with trample. But this is a spicy bit. Creatures you control with trample have, you may have this creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So classically this card uh, was found in Fawn Elementals and Roxes <laughs> back, in, back in the day. Any creature card that has trample, you can choose not to deal that damage to a creature and just go straight to the face impressive for an uncommon. I'm really surprised it's a, not a higher rarity. Call of the Death Dweller costs two colourless mana and a swamp for a sorcery spell which allows you to return up to two target creature cards with total converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them, then put a menace counter on either of them too. It's a shame to focus on the speed of the spell, but that does harm it. But if you are looking at recurring any weenies with extra value, these counters you can put on top, I would pick this one if you're along those themes. Otherwise, it can be a little bit narrow. This card, Clash of the Titans, who knows whether it's a reference to the film of the same name, but this one is definitely a monstrous card. Three colourless and two mountains for an instant spell that allows you to target one creature that fights another target creature. So at the end of an opponent's turn, if they have two creatures, you can play this having them fight each other. Uh, you can do it with one of your creatures to one of your opponent's creatures, but as an instant speed piece of removal, this is well worth the five mana. Our next recursion spell is called Indestructible Link for four colorless and a swamp, which is a sorcery speed spell that allows you to return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield with a lifelink counter. It should be called Lifelink Link. Link. <laughs> it reminds me of Bonds of Martyr. It's okay, would be better if it's instant speed, which leads me on to my next recursion spell. Back for more, my favourite reanimation spell of the day. Four colourless, one swamp, one forest. For an instant, that is vitally important. Return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So this could be a two for one, bringing a creature back from the graveyard and taking out one of your opponent's creatures. Look out for this card, very close to being my terrific card of the day. Another example of potential power creep. This is explosive vegetation and then some. Get the ramp. And then have that cycling option if our first rare of the day, Colossification. Five colorless, two forest for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, when Colossification enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 20, plus 20. This is the biggest stat improver in the history of Magic the Gathering. Wow. Stick this in a Jarad Lich Lord deck or even fling it to your opponent. This is a bit deadly because it taps the enchanted creature, but if you untap with it, give it trample, you could one shot your opponent for seven mana. And it's all in the form of a big kitty. Meow. Next card, we have Mass Extinction. I really like this card because it's a malleable re removal piece that you can work to your favour. Pairs with Jaruda 
or Yenet Cryptic Sovereign decks. So it reads, three colorless and a swamp. Choose odd or even. Exile all creatures with converted mana costs of the chosen value. Zero is even. So if you're finding a particular swathe of creatures annoying on your opponent's side of the board, play this, choose which ones you want to get rid of, and hey presto. Next up is Labyrinth Raptor. One swamp and one forest for a 2-2 nightmare dinosaur. It has menace. Whenever a creature you control with menace becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. One swamp, one mountain to give it fire breathing. Creatures you control with menace get plus one plus zero until end of turn. You have to block with two creatures with a menace creature. One of them immediately dies and you can pump this creature. Very daunting if this is a creature that you have to defend against. Our next rare is Death's Oasis. One plains, one swamp, one forest for an enchantment that reads, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand, and costs one colorless to sacrifice Death's Oasis. You gain life equals to the greatest converted mana cost among creatures you control. Nice little self mill package and recursion each time a creature dies. And if you're in a tight spot, pay one for some valuable life. Solid, if not uninspired. Next card is Dranith Magistrate. One colorless and a planes for a 1-3 human wizard. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Another pesky fun police card that stops graveyard casting from your deck casting or companion casting. It's annoying, but necessary. Next up is the first of a cycle based on the apex monsters from the set. Mythos of Vadrock, which costs two colorless and two mountains for a sorcery that deals 5 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. If a planes and an island was spent to cast a spell, until your next turn those permanents can't attack or block and their activated abilities can't be activated. So with this cycle, if you pay the auxiliary colours, it will grant you an extra benefit. This card with the core colour deals damage to any number of targets, which also has a nice arrest ability on top, which is flavorful for the other two colours. Our next card in the cycle is Mythos of Nephroi. Two colourless and a swamp for an instant. Destroy target non-land permanent if it's a creature, or if a forest and a plains were spent to cast this spell. So a little bit confusing text here, but basically, it's a beast within that if you pay the forest and the planes, you don't get the downside with your opponent creating a 3-3 beast creature token. Amazing removal, even if you can't cast it with the additional colours. I would definitely pick this in Limited and in many an Abzan commander deck. Next up in this cycle is Mythos of Snapdax. Two colourless and two planes for a sorcery spell. Each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If a swamp and a mountain was spent to cast a spell, you choose the permanents for each player instead. Really naughty, potentially ruins someone's day. Even if you can't pay the right colours, it will keep big board stakes under control. Another great piece of removal in limited and commander format. So I have <laughs> a fear of sharks. This card is not doing anything to ease those fears. A big flashy shark that allows you to counter a artifact or a creature spell, then your opponent could flash it in to be a defending creature. I'm going away from this card very quickly. <laughs> okay, next up we have a Quartz Forest Crusher, a two colorless, 
2 Mountain and 1 Forest 6-6 six, six, Trample Dinosaur Beast. Whenever one or more creatures you control with Trample deals combat damage to a player, create an XX Green Dinosaur Beast token with Trample, where X is the damage dealt to that player. One word, Gishaf. Pile on the misery by creating another obscenely big dinosaur. You have a new best friend. We haven't seen many Godzilla alternative artworks recently in today's spoilers. So here's one for you now. This goes with the Ever Quill Phoenix. Two colorless and two mountains for 4-4 four, four flying phoenix with mutate. Whenever this creature mutates, create a red artifact token name Feather with a cost of one, sacrifice Feather, return target Phoenix card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Now, this is a tribe that doesn't need any help getting creatures out of the graveyard. <laughs> More misery in the form of a flying death ball. Beautiful. Yadaro, wandering monster. Five colorless, two mountains for an 8-8 eight, eight dinosaur turtle with trample and haste, which has cycling for one colorless and one mountain. When you cycle your Daro wandering monster, shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named your Daro wandering monster four or more times, put it onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead. <laughs> this shouldn't have haste. It has the other keyword of trample, which are a scary combination. And if you manage to run four of these and cycle four of them, just put it onto the graveyard instead. Enough said. Really nice alternative artwork on it as well. Dirge Bat, potentially the best mutating creature from today's spoilers. Two colorless, two swamps for a three, three bat creature, which has flash, flying, and whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. <sighs> Woof. If you manage to stack this with cheaper mutate creatures, choo choo, all aboard the value train. This is an insane ability if you manage to trigger it more than once. The artwork is also pretty special. Now, this is blatantly King Kong. But unfortunately, we haven't seen the alternative Godzilla promo artwork yet. But really flavorful. It reads, three colorless, three forests for a 7-6 legendary creature, Ape. When Kogler the Titan Ape enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Whenever Kogler attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defender player controls and pay one and a forest return target human you control to its owner's hand, Kugler gains indestructible until end of turn. Each ability really resonates with the film, and instead of a skyscraper, it's on top of a giant glowing crystal. Creative license, let's say. Our next creature is a crystal giant, which costs three for a three, three artifact creature. At the beginning of your turn's combat, randomly choose one of the counters that aren't on Crystal Giant, one of the 10 types of counters in the set. Put a counter of that type on Crystal Giant. Here we also have the alternative artwork, Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> uh, this is the definition of a hit or miss. It's probably worth playing because of the colorless element, but don't use this card as a reliable way of killing your opponents. Our next card is General Kudre of Dranif. One colorless, one plains, one swamp for a 3-3 three, three legendary human soldier. Other humans you control get plus one plus one. Whenever General Kudre of Dranif or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. You can also pay two to sacrifice two humans and destroy target creature with power four or greater. Uh, I'm not too convinced on this creature. You have to lean heavily into the human's build, or if you're going that way in a commander deck, then it obviously has its benefits, but it's not guaranteed that you'll get the creatures that synergize with this, so maybe not the best mythic in the set. I could be persuaded otherwise. Next is Cheville. 
Bane of Monsters, one Swamp, one Forest, for a 1-3 Legendary Human Rogue. Now this is more like it for a decent human. It has Death Touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on the target creature or planeswalker that an opponent controls. Whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain 3 life and draw a card. This is giving me Craven vibes. If you have uh, reliable ways to kill permanent, it's worth its weight in gold. And itself has death touch, so you'd hope to get at least one trigger off that last ability for two mana, very good text box. Next up, we have Fiend Artisan. Two Golgari hybrid mana symbols for a 1-1 nightmare. Fiend Artisan gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. You can also pay X and a Golgari hybrid mana and tap that creature to sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only at any time you would cast a sorcery. It's another variant of Birthing Pod on Legs. That's not a broken card, is it? Psst, it is a broken card. <laughs> so, that finally leads me on to my last card of the day. And it is my terrific pick. I've been looking forward to this one. This is definitely something that is a greedy personal choice. I have 27 commander decks and it has a Abzan shaped hole. And finally that color combination has a sweet build around card. So here it is Nephrol Apex of Death. Look at that artwork. I am in love. It is a cat nightmare beast which costs two colorless, one planes, one swamp, one forest for a 5 5 death touch life linking creature. But it's the bottom text box that I am excited about. Whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is insane. You can fill up your graveyard, mutate, bring the creatures back, rinse, repeat. Job done. <laughs> so many possibilities to abuse this card and it's definitely going to be the face card of a brand new commander deck. I'm thinking the artwork on the left. Beautiful. So here we are at the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed my takes on the new cards that spoiled today. And join me tomorrow for day three of Homebrew MTG's pre-brews. Cheers.